are very proud to welcome none other than Molly Sugden. First, we have to start with your given first name. Oh, that's Isabel. Spelled I-S-A-B-E-L, Mary. But I've never been called anything except Molly. You see, my mother didn't believe in people having nicknames. Said you've got two perfectly good first names, so she called me Molly. <laughs> Molly, you know, I look at you and I want to giggle. I don't, I don't know if you always had that effect on people, but when you were just a wee little girl, were you funny as well? I, I think probably I was. Often in the street and in shops, people laugh when they see me. It's not always flattering, is it? <laughs> but when I was five years old, uh, we lived in a village in Yorkshire, and um, my parents didn't go with me to this concert. A big girl took me to a concert. It was a church concert, so I mean, I was quite safe and in a village, you're all right. And I heard a lady say, uh, say a quite funny piece. And I thought, oh, I can say that. Oh, 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 yes, and I, I remembered it. And when I got home, I tried to tell my parents about it, but they were busy. They were discussing my brother's wedding because he was a lot older than me. And so nobody had listened. And when, it, when Christmas came around, we had a big family party. And there was a lull in the conversation and somebody said, well, who's going to do something? So I said, I will. And the mother said, she couldn't do anything. Sit down. And somebody said, oh, let her, go on. So I got up and said this piece. And everybody fell about laughing. And I knew then that what I wanted to do is make people laugh. <laughs> Let's talk about Are You Being Served? Because that's the first time I saw you. And I must say, the first time I saw you, you had purple hair. <laughs> What's the story with Mrs. Slocum's hair? Well, you see, it was my idea because we did the pilot, the first one, just to try it out. And when I saw it, I thought, what a boring old thing. <laughs> my hair was dark and miserable. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. So when David Croft, the writer, whom I'd known forever and ever, he rang up to say, oh, we're going to do a series. And I thought, well, I've got to do something about my hair. It's terrible. <laughs> So I thought, well, I know, a different color every week. <laughs> so I, I mentioned to David, and he just went, that's his way of laughing and agreeing. <laughs> I thought, right. But, you see, because I had thought of it, and it was a new show, and I felt, well, the BBC might not want to, to get me wigs every week. So I had my own hair bleached. Yeah. And then I had the they were sort of um, vegetable colors that would wash out mm -hmm. so each week the only thing was that the ends having been bleached were a bit spongy and the color didn't wear out up there <laughs> it, it didn't wash out so i'd have little green ends <laughs> and then of course the next week the purple and uh, it would wash out but there'd be purple and green ends <laughs> And in the end, uh, purple and pink and blue and green, all of them, all of them. And I used to be collecting my boys from school, and they didn't really appreciate that at all. <laughs> so uh, w when we did another series, I thought, well, perhaps now it's successful enough, they can get me wigs. Yes. So after that, it was wigs. <laughs> it was wigs. All right. Is this your... I, I don't know. This, this is be... mine. Untouched okay. by human eyes. <laughs> <Who's gonna say? laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about the cast of Are You Being Served. We saw the chemistry among all of you, but we want to know the inside scoop. Talk about some of the people in the show with you, and were they really like their characters somewhat? Yes, quite. Oh, no. Yes, I think, I think perhaps that's part of the reason why it's been so, so successful. There's so much of each of us in the character. Well, let's start with John Inman, for example. Oh, John. Yeah. Yes. Well, what can I say? He's so popular, he's very witty. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you'll understand this in America, 
You'll have to cut it out if, it, if you don't. <laughs> but uh, John, early on, uh, said, you know, Jeremy Lloyd, who was one of the writers of the show, he's frightfully far back, you know. He's always frightfully English and posh. And um, I said, do you think that uh, Jeremy's third in line for the throne? And John <laughs> said, well, there wasn't a queue when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep this. No, he's, he's a very funny man. Yes, he is. You're no slouch, by the way. <laughs> All right, what about uh, Frank Thornton, Captain Peacock? We were so happy to have him just recently. Oh, on yes. The show. Frank's very like that, yes. too. He very is. like that. He never, I think he's already told you the story, hasn't he, about when I said, Are you free, are you P Captain Freecock? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was the only one in the place who didn't know, and it's the only time I've seen Frank break up. Because he was, he was standing there, and slowly, as I slow, <laughs> and he started laughing. It's the only time I've ever known him laugh. He's marvelous self-control. Mm -hmm. Much more so than Trevor, Mr. Lucas. Uh-oh. Oh, oh you tell us. <laughs> tell us all. Especially in the canteen. They were, they were terrible scenes to do, because we could all see Arthur Bruff. And Arthur's such a funny man. And, and you see, we, we sat at this table. Nobody ever sat at the, you know, the side near the camera. We mm. all sat around this side. Mm -hmm. And we could see each other. And, and uh, we could never get through without laughing. They, they kept having to do retakes. But often, Trevor didn't have the camera on him at all because he, he was sitting, <laughs> trying not to laugh. But Arthur, Arthur Bruff was a very funny man. Yeah. yeah. What about Wendy? Wendy oh. Richards, she's a good friend of yours, is she? Oh, yes, yes. Miss Brahms? Yes, she's very useful to know because she loves London. She lives in London. In fact, she's never happy if she's not within spitting di distance of ex-Harrods. Oh, well. And I don't live there. I live in the country, you see. But if ever I want to get something uh, special, I know, if I ask Wendy, you want to go to Dickens and Jones, dear? <laughs> that's the, you, they're, they're the best, and that's where you get it cheapest. <laughs> she always knows the best. Yeah. Are you a shopper? What happens when you shop? Do people ask if you're free, or? Yes, they do. They do. Yes. yes. I thought at one time, I'll never be able to go into Harrods again. Yeah. But uh, to my amazement, yes, I could have gone to the canteen and had a free lunch. <laughs> And the, the thing, quite interesting, was that they, they were the um, shop assistants in Harrods were told that they mustn't say, uh, are you free anymore? They have to say, may we help you? We hear from everybody who worked on the show about Jeremy Lloyd, the producer, and David Croft. What was it like? Were, did, were they great to work with? They were. Oh, yes, they were. Actually, before we did the pilot i'd been working with david croft uh, doing a very tiny part in a situation comedy and at the end david was always very kind he'd always come and say thank you very much very nice performance which is quite nice of him and uh, he came to my dress and he said oh and there's something coming up for you i said what what what, what? you'll know when you get the script and I got the script for Are You Being Served about a fortnight later, and I thought, oh, this is what he meant. So he always had you in mind. I Mrs. think Slocum. so. You think so, yes. yeah. That, so that part was, in effect, written for Molly. Well, I think he'd have written it anyway, because you couldn't do without the head of ladies' work, or intimate apparel. <laughs> <laughs> and if you did think of something, I mean, obviously, once you get to the uh, camera rehearsal, and uh, actually recording it, it has to stay exactly as rehearsed mm. because they need the camera cuts. And, uh, but at the beginning, when you're learning it, sometimes things will occur to you. And they were always so good, they'd always say, keep that in, which was very nice. We'd want that when my boys were at school, they, uh, they didn't always want to eat their school dinners. And not, all, not always, surprisingly. But uh, they had a, a special bin, you see, called the pig bin. And they, they, they put anything left over on their plates into this bin. And there was one episode where we were in the canteen and Mr. Mash 
came and sat with us. And I said, Mr. Marsh, this is our departmental table. And I was supposed to say, there's a place over there for you by the dustbin. I thought, no, no. And I remember, so I said, there's a place over there by you, for you, by the pig bin. <laughs> and I don't know why, but the pig bin is so much funnier and so much more insulting. And, uh, but they didn't mind if you did that. They, they... I have to talk about your clothing. You are beautifully attired. This is not exactly what we saw in Are You Being Served? No. <laughs> oh, what about some of those costumes? Weren't they amazing? Yeah. But you know, it was great fun. That, that was, it was very, very amusing to do. Well, I'm sure some of those clothes had a following. I'm sure some people tuned in and saw, what? I don't know if you've seen the one where I, I came on um, as Miss Grace Brothers, trying to be Miss Grace Brothers in a green corset with black stockings. Do you know? <laughs> I had a letter from a man wanting a photograph of me in that outfit. <laughs> Mercifully, I didn't have one. <laughs> Can you imagine, oh dear? I had a letter from a lady saying that her daughter was getting married in Bermuda. And she was going to go from London to the wedding. And would I please tell her where she could get a copy of my Grace Brothers outfit because she would like to wear it for her daughter's wedding. In Bermuda! Can you imagine? As her, well, of course, there was no hope because they, they were made, especially the wardrobe department made them, and I had a different frill in dollars every year. I had more frills than Wendy. <laughs> We see episodes of Are You Being Served again. What was it like getting back together several years later? Could you pick up where you'd left off? Oh, yes, absolutely. Nobody had changed very much, except we all looked a little bit older, especially me. Oh. <laughs> but, no, it was lovely. The nice thing about Grace and Faber, or as you call it, Are You Being Served again, was that we went on location. We'd never done that with the Are You Being Served, you see, because we always were in the shop. Right which of course was a set put up at the BBC. And uh, so we'd never been on location. So it was lovely, we went to a, a village in Gloucestershire and went all in the lanes around and the manor house where we did it, Chavenage Manor. So, oh, it was great. And of course, you know, being out there for about three weeks, we all had a, a, a great deal of fun, it was lovely. You can't walk through a room without being stopped and people running up to you and oh we love you molly and oh, isn't it lovely it's great but does that surprise you isn't there a difference in humor that americans like versus the english well i might have thought so once yeah. but i can't i can't believe that now it's uh, it's quite surprising it's very pleasing yeah you like america oh yes but we wouldn't you like americans <laughs> But you see, we, we've been all over the world. And I, I, places where I wouldn't have thought they'd laugh. The last time I heard anything, we were in Egypt. What would they think about how you're being served in Egypt? <laughs> you know, it's not like a Cairo market, is it? <laughs> I think I always felt there was, there was an aura of success about it. It felt fun, it felt good. And when you, when you had the script, the, the lines came off the page, you knew exactly what you were going to do with them. Did I hear that the royal family is a fan of yours and watches Well, I you? don't know. I wouldn't yeah. say. The Queen hasn't actually said she is. But, but uh, certainly Princess Anne was awfully nice to me. And, uh, and it was um, a celebration of Christmas at the Albert Hall. And it was f packed with really big stars a lot of your american people came and uh, oh it was, it was a lovely lovely occasion but at the beginning it was really quite quiet a carol and a little quiet reading and then suddenly we got to a bit where i had to come on right at the back of the albert hall down the steps through the audience shouting and 
I don't know, I, I'm never going to be able to do this, because the Albert Hall is very daunting. And, uh, and, and after all this quietness, suddenly for me to come down the stairs shouting, Oi, Noah, come here! I'm not going to be able to open my mouth. Anyway, I did, and uh, it was a quite funny little scene that we did. And when I, uh, Princess Anne uh, spoke to me afterwards, she said, I thought, I was afraid at the beginning, it was going to be rather serious and quiet. Mm. And then you came on, and everybody recognized you and laughed, so I thought, oh, this is going to be fun. Wasn't that nice? Yes. <laughs> You've gone from theater to film, and I guess back again. Is there a big difference, or do you have a preference for one medium over the other? I do like television. I think because it's always something a little different. You're not saying the same lines over again. Whereas in the theater, night after night after night, you're always saying the same thing. Not always in the same way, obviously, that it grows. Any ideas about doing perhaps more serious performances you must have in your vast career you couldn't have always done comedy oh no no you can't do comedy all the time no. but just lately you see now I, I don't really think i could go on in a serious part because everybody expects me to be funny and anyway i really do prefer to be funny uh, but now and again sometimes i think i'd like to do a little weepy part but it doesn't matter. I'm very content. I've had a lovely time. Your husband, of course, the actor, William Moore, he's so cute. Well, I think so. He's, very he's a bit man. too cute, if you ask me. <laughs> he's watching us, so we have to be careful. But, <laughs> but you can tell me, was it love at first sight when you saw him? Nearly, I think. I, I sort of... Uh, he came to the company I was working in. I'd been there for 18 months and was quite settled and quite pleasant. And uh, he joined the company one Tuesday morning. I thought, hmm, he's a bit lucky. I'll have to watch him. <laughs> and I've been watching him ever since. <laughs> I must talk about your family. You've mentioned your boys. Yes. Twins? Twins, yes. Identical twins? Yes. How identical? Well, until they were six months old, we had to keep them labelled. <laughs> uh, we had a little, little tape round their ankles with their names on. And as their ankles got a little bit bigger, and uh, the tapes had to be taken off and enlarged, but I never took them both off together, because I, I, I had the terror of getting them mixed up. But then after that, of course, their, their personalities begin to develop, and we could tell the difference. But uh, they were married within three months of each other. It's funny that, you know, they do everything together. <laughs> and um, uh, Bill's sister, of course, came to the wedding. And the first wedding was Robin's, you see. And Bill's sister went up to Simon and said, It's your big day today. He said, No, it isn't. <laughs> it's Robin's big day. So when it was Simon's big day, she went to Robin and said, So now it's your big day. No, it isn't. <laughs> and that was when they were grown up. But the extraordinary thing was, they didn't have any children until they'd been married for four and a half years. And then their little boys were born within ten days of each other. Now, I know it. they do everything together, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> You're terrific. All right, do you want to keep working forever, or will there come a time when Molly Sugden retires? I don't think actors ever retire. They're like old soldiers. They just fade away. Mm -hmm. But now, particularly, I think we're taking longer gaps between working. Because the family and the grandchildren, we now have three little grandsons. They take up an awful lot of time. It's wonderful. One last question. How would Mrs. Slocum sum up the career of Molly Sugden? What an extraordinary question. I really don't know. I think she's a lucky cow.